and this uh, axe is used by my girlfriend. The other day she was ch chopping up some logs though and hit the dirt, so maybe you can see that. Quite a big nasty chip in it. Not too bad though. But the point I'm really going to make here is that when you're learning to use an axe, you're going to damage them, so don't buy expensive ones to begin with. Learn to sharpen and make your mistakes with a cheap axe. Miss it. So, really, these small chips and even quite significant chips really don't make a big difference. I've seen guys training with timber sport axes with huge chips in them, and uh, okay, maybe they cut slightly less. Good, but it doesn't really make a huge difference. It's not like a knife where if you have a big chip in it, it really stops the slicing. You're going to make mistakes when you're learning to use axes. I've done it. My girlfriend's just done it. Most people are going to do it at some stage. Start with a cheap axe, make your mistakes, and then go and buy an expensive one if you want or feel the need to later on. Because I've seen so many posts now of guys with Grand Swiss Brux axes they've bought. They've not really had any clue how to use them. They've stuck them in the ground and they've got generally much smaller chips than this axe has. And they're going, oh, how do I fix this now? How do I file it? I'm really afraid of ruining my axe by sharpening it or whatever. In any case, I'll get this back into action. Just a flat chainsaw file. Remember to always remove some material on the heel and keep the shape. You don't want to just file out the chip. You want to maintain the shape of the axe. So that goes for filing back into the, the cheek here and thinning it out again. Tuck a new bevel onto it. second time this axe has had significant damage. The first time was me when I was bucking a log and the log was off the ground slightly and that was because there was a big massive brick underneath it and I didn't see the brick and obviously as I was chopping through the toe I hit the brick and it took a big chunk out of it. So as I said everyone will do it at some stage, doesn't matter how good you are or think you are it happens. That's the chip almost completely out. 
I'm just going to leave it there though. It does cut a bit better, but uh, you know, the way it was doing the job. I'm just going to leave that there so I can drive it into the back of the concrete step and come back to square one. So there you go. So it's edge maintained, blended back in with the cheeks. So that's why I prefer a small file rather than pucks or stones. If you damage your axe out in the field, you just saw there in real time how long it took me to get this axe back into pretty serviceable shape. If you're trying to remove chips like that with a stone, you'll be there for hours. Stones are good for polishing the edge and maintaining it, but they're crap at removing chips and uh, reprofiling after significant damage. So I also want to take this opportunity to remind everyone that uh, the Cornwall Challenge is almost over for this year. Please uh, get in contact and email me with uh, some pictures or links to videos or anything like that so that I can make the final video and uh, that you don't miss out on getting a shout out. So I really prefer if you could please email me because uh, it keeps it all in one place whereas if it's just on various forums and stuff it's very hard for me to keep track of. So well done to everyone who's completed it. I know a few people have so far and I hope to see everybody else who's uh, still to submit. So I understand this year has been very difficult. So um, priorities have changed for a lot of people and uh, that sort of thing but uh, you know, even if you just barely attempted it or got out and just chopped for a couple of hours, you know, it's great. And it's, I think it's, um, particularly for me, it's a very good way of busting stress in these difficult times. So thank you very much and uh, hope you enjoyed.